Lord, thank you so much uh, for tonight, Lord, that we could get in your word. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would um, allow us, Lord, to, to hear what it is that you want us to learn. And um, Lord, or to be refreshed. And uh, if we already know uh, just the story and the life of Joseph here, I pray that you would encourage our hearts. Uh, Lord, if there's anything that applies in our own lives, that you would speak to us, Lord, and uh, give us the heart like Joseph, Lord, to bring uh, that restoration and, uh, or uh, to love our enemies, Lord, uh, whatever it might be. I pray that you would just, you would be our encouragement, Lord. And uh, Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, if you guys remember, we're going through Genesis and we're talking about the life of Joseph. Joseph uh, became second in command over Egypt, only to Pharaoh. You guys remember there was seven good years and a prospering, right? They 20% they tax on everybody. Uh, life was going good. And then seven years of famine that came afterward. And so Joseph ends up testing his brothers because they go out to go buy grain there to Egypt. And uh, Joseph, well, he, 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 he remember he got Simeon and he told the brothers to go back and get Benjamin. But it was a test for them to repent really of what they did and really confess their sins on, on what they did to him. And, and selling him into slavery. So um, he tells them, you know, go back and get, get it. Or, or my young, he didn't say, doesn't say my youngest brother, but go back and get your younger brother. But by blood, that's his full brother. Because Jacob and Rachel, Rachel only had two kids or two boys that we know, right? And, and uh, so it was Joseph and Benjamin. So they go back and that's kind of where we're at today. We're going to be looking at uh, really, uh, a few things about uh, Joseph's brothers here in chapter uh, 43 and 44. Let's look at the first thing here is they're, gonna, they're going to Egypt in verses 1 to 14. They're going to Egypt. Uh, and Jacob commands his sons to, you know, to go get more grain. So that's where we pick up here in verse 1. It says, Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But J Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, speaking of Joseph, saying, You shall not see my face until unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said, to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us point, pointedly about ourselves and our family, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to these words. Could we possibly have known that he would say, bring your brother down? Then Judah said to Israel, Jacob his father, send the lad with me and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not lingered, surely by now we would have returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down a present for the man, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio nuts, yum, and almonds, Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the, the money that was returned in the mouth of your sex. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise. Go back to the man and may God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved, right? He says, so Jacob, he's giving the command. Uh, for his sons, go back to Egypt, go buy some grain, uh, and and they say, well, we can't, right? They said he's, you know, that that guy said 
uh, don't come back, don't let me see your face unless you bring your youngest brother, Benjamin. And so Jacob thinks, you know, his sons uh, gave too much information uh, to Joseph uh, or, you know, this guy in Egypt. And so Jacob finally comes to the point and he tells his sons, just, okay, go back, and, and but give double portion. And since the land is so dry, it's so, you know, this famine is just so severe, uh, they're literally out of food. And I don't know about you guys, but if I have a lack of sleep, it kind of changes my attitude a little bit. If I am hungry, <laughs> I'm like, right? Uh, it, it really changes, it kind of changes your decision makings a little bit. And so I could I could imagine, you know, food getting a little scarce, and you're looking around, and you're like, you know, and, and then that hopelessness kind of sets in a little bit. Uh, and there's only one option, go to Egypt, right? And I, I could see the Lord really using this opportunity to make things happen, to get them to go to Egypt. But it's interesting that Jacob, uh, you know, deceiver, conniver, this is Jacob of all people, right? His name was changed, obviously, to Israel, but did you guys notice that he's not coming up with any schemes right here? He's always coming up with something. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go, and then all of a sudden they open it, oh, and you know, some kind of something's going to happen. This is Jacob, and none of that stuff is happening here, but here he's not making any of that. In fact, in verse 14, notice he turns to God Almighty, and he finally turns to the Lord for help. And after, you know really nowhere else to turn and it's always a good thing to turn to God first I, I think before we use up all of our resources before we go to all of our friends uh, I think it's wise to turn to the Lord first and foremost think about it he's God Almighty Al Shaddai he's the, the the king of the universe if you really think about it this is God we're talking about uh, I mean you run to him talk about who has unlimited resources, right? It's the Lord. And yet we run to each other, or yet we run to so-and-so or to, to something. And But we, when do we turn to the Lord? For a lot of people, it's the last resort, right? It's like when everything, you know, is falling apart, then it's like, oh, Lord. And finally, you get that quiet time with the Lord. But this time, it's because of the circumstance, right? And, and it's really sad. But Jacob finally turns to the Lord, and, and uh, you know, I, I question my own heart, and all of us should, is do we really believe that the Lord God is God Almighty? I mean, do we really believe that? Um, you know, and if we do, we're going to have that rest. We're going to have that peace. We're going to have that assurance. We're going to have that confidence that only comes from the Lord. And think about it. God is so much bigger than any circumstance that comes our way. He's greater than anything and anyone. You know, did you, you know, the more you consider that, it's like, how come I didn't come to you sooner? <laughs> like, wow, right? I think all of us, uh, if we look back at our lives when we first met the Lord, it's like, oh, we all hit our forehead like, oh, I should have came to the Lord a lot sooner than that. I should have came when I was in elementary school. What's wrong with me? <laughs> It's because we see the blessings and the assurance and the confidence and the you know, it, it's the love, right? God is love. And, and so it's, it's a beautiful thing. But let's go to the second thing here is their, speaking of the brothers, their arrival in Egypt. Uh, in verses 15 to 25, uh, we see that the brothers finally arrive to Egypt and, and their, their hearts is really to buy grain. And so let's see what happens. It says, so the men took that present and Benjamin and they took double money in their hand and arose and went down to Egypt and they stood before Joseph when Joseph saw Benjamin with them he said to the steward of the house of his house take these men to my home and slaughter an animal and make ready wow they're gonna have fresh barbecue isn't that great I'm so used to like store-bought meat that's like from you know how long ago this is great for these men will dine with me at noon. Then the men did as Joseph ordered, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, it's because of the money which was returned in our sacks for the first time that we brought in. And so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves. 
with our donkeys. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. What? Why would they even mention that? With our donkeys. Oh no. Wow. Why mention their donkeys? They must have really loved their donkeys. Seriously. <laughs> I read that and I was like, why? Why would you? I mean, I would have stopped right here to cease us to be slaves, period. <laughs> With our donkeys. Oh, no. Anyway, sorry. Um, when they drew near to the stewards, uh, the steward of Joseph's house, they talked with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, but it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks, and there each man's money was in the mouth of his sack, and our money in full weight. And so we have brought it back in our hand, and we have brought down the other money in our hands to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks, but he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Wow, isn't that cool? Then he brought Simeon out to them. And so the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water and washed their feet and gave their donkeys feed. Then they made the present ready for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they would eat bread there. Wow, let's slow down really quick. So Joseph's brothers, they arrive in Egypt. When they get there, they're invited immediately into Joseph's house. And, you know, immediately they're feeling guilty because they're like, why are we here? Oh, no, he's going to, you know, we're going to be slaves all of our lives. But according to verse 18, the Bible says that they were afraid. They were fearful. And, and they got their eyes uh, off the circumstance, if you will, or really off of the Lord and on the circumstance, onto themselves. And they became terrified. What, did you guys really, in the mind, that's where it all started, right? Uh, it was by their thoughts that they became terrified. They terrified themselves by what they thought. Isn't that interesting? How many of us do that today? We could be watching something and you're like, Bwah! right? My, my kids and I, we, uh, we lost our TV remote for like a whole week. We couldn't find it. <laughs> we finally found it and it, you know, it was, in, it was under the chair of all things, right in front of it. Then, anyways, we turn it on. And we're watching this, it's just a movie trailer, an old movie back in the day, but, um, and, and all of us were like, you know, I looked at my, my kids and their eyes were like, whoa, it was about, uh, you know, there's comets coming down, <laughs> and Ezra's like, oh, is that really happening right now? And I saw, no, it's not, it's a, it's a tra how do you explain that to a three-year-old, right? So let's just turn this off, we don't, we don't need that. But it's amazing that we could do that. How many times do we do that to her? We see stuff going on. It may be fake and not even real, but our hearts are already there as if it is real. Our hearts are already like, ah, right? And it's, it's not fun. But we need to see things according to the word of God. We need to trust in the Lord. And, and, and then that he can intervene at any moment. In fact, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, he says, well, we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words, we're walking by faith. We're not walking by sight. The things that happen in sight, those are all uh, temporary. They're not eternal. We are to set our eyes on the things that are eternal. And, and when we get our eyes off of Jesus, uh, the next thing that's going to happen is obvious. You're going to become afraid. Uh, because when your eyes are on the Lord, you're going to be confident, right? We're going to be more than conquerors, right? Because of Jesus. And, and we know that. But once it's, it's the opposite, when our eyes are off of Christ. So obviously there's no reason for them to be afraid. Because look at verse 23. I thought this was encouraging. Uh, you know, the man of the, the, the house that Joseph said to go get them, and he's, he's, he's talking to the brothers. He says to them, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. And, and that all that worry, all those sleepless nights, all those nail biting, right, and that hair pulling, and that, <laughs> right? It was all for nothing. And in fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Isn't that interesting? First John chapter 4, verse 18, 
It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We need to be careful um, to realize that we're not to be fearful. Uh, and, and we have been given a spirit of power, of love, of a sound mind. And, and perfect love cast out all fear. That's what it just said. And in fact, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another. That's the opposite of what fear is. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if you are not a believer, of course you're going to be terrified. Right? And that fearfulness is going to creep in. But as a believer, we ought to continue. When, when something comes around us, and it will, right? The sights are going to be interesting. But when they come around, uh, we got to keep our focus on who we are. We're citizens of heaven. We're not of this world, right? We, we are called out of this world. And our minds ought to be on the Lord. I know it's, you know, we're the church, but this is a, an encouragement to all of us because. Uh, we're living in the end times. Um, in fact, uh, consider God Almighty is with us, right, as the church. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. But here's the command to us as believers, as the church. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, be in complete control of your heart. Be in complete control of your mind. And, and set it on Jesus. Set your focus on the Lord. Walk by faith, right? Not by sight. In fact, Ephesians 2.14 says, For he, Jesus himself, is our peace. Isn't that wonderful? So Jesus has become our everything, literally, as a believer. All sufficient, right? He is all sufficient for our every need. You got something? He's he's it. <laughs> you can run to him. And it's wonderful. Well, let's keep going with our study here. And the third thing that we learned about the brothers here is they're uh, rejoicing in Egypt. Notice in verses 26 to 34, uh, it says in verse 26, And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in their hand, into the house. And but notice this, I underlined this in my Bible. It says, and bow down before him to the earth. Whoa! This is the ultimate fulfillment. If you guys remember Joseph's dream, uh, really the, what was prophesied in Genesis chapter 37, verse 7. You guys remember when Joseph had the dream of the sheep, you know, standing upright, the big sheep, and then uh, there's the 11 other sheaves that bow down. Speaking of his brothers, in other words, in totality, all his brothers. So who's here right now? Benjamin was a part of that dream, and, and he's bowing down. And so this literally completes, ultimately, that fulfillment of the dream. They're all bowing down. Look at verse 27. Then he asked them about their well-being and said, Is your father well? The old man of whom you spoke, is he still alive? Uh, look at verse 28. And they answered, Your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed their, their heads down and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and he saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, God, be gracious to you, my son. My son. Interesting. He would say, my son. Joseph finally sees his blood brother. Remember, through Jacob and Rachel, right? Uh, this is his full brother. And Joseph had been in Egypt for, I don't know, what, 21 years? And, and so uh, Benjamin, you know, being, you know, definitely 20, 21, however old he is, and, you know, he's a, a man now, right? And Joseph's looking at him like, whoa, he's never seen him before. So uh, it's basically... Um, it's pretty cool. Look at verse 30. It says, Now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made haste and sought somewhere to weep. He loved his brother so much. It brought tears to his, his heart. And he, he went into his chamber and he wept there. 
And then he washed his face and came out and he restrained himself and said, serve the bread. And so they set him a place by himself and then, uh, and then by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with uh, them by themselves because the Egyptians, well, they couldn't eat food with the Hebrews. Oh no, that would be an abomination to the Egyptians, right? Same thing, right? Racism and all that, that the separation. It's been a, from back then, guys. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Like Ecclesiastes says. Same thing's happening there. Uh, and it says, And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. Then he took servings uh, to them from before him. But Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. And so they drank and were merry with him. What's interesting is in verse 34, here is Joseph's second in command, in charge, basically over all of Egypt, in a sense, over the world, because there's this huge worldwide famine. And he recognizes these Hebrew men, these brothers, brings them into his home, and he prepares a meal for them. Uh, but notice in verse 34, Joseph I mean, think about it. Second in command. I mean, think about his title. Think about his position. But it, notice it says he's serving them. He is serving these shepherd guys, right? These Hebrews. These they stink. <laughs> they 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 came in. They're coming into his own house, and but he's serving them. And 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 it's the same thing. I'm reminded. Jesus said for us to pray for our enemies because these guys were basically i mean they they betrayed him they sold him into slavery human trafficking they didn't care they basically wanted him dead and how does he return them uh by serving them by loving them jesus said love love your enemies right um and in fact christ said in uh, matthew chapter 20 verse 28 just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus set that example for all of us uh, in how we should serve one another. And the world says, you know, you should be served because you deserve it, right? That's what the world teaches us. But when you became a believer, you realize, oh, wait a minute, no, uh, I'm not here to get served. I'm here to serve, to give. And, and I think... You guys are a, a mature group. This, this fellowship that the Lord has kind of brought together, you guys all kind of just came alongside with all your gifts. Everybody used their gifts. They all, we serve one another, right? Nobody's coming in here demanding, hey, you, go get me the, hey, you, go get this, hey, you, go get, somebody wash my feet already, right? None of us have that attitude, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people that have that attitude. Um, but it's, it's, it's awesome. It's pretty neat how the Lord uh, is doing that. But, um, we're to be a follower of Christ, right, and not of others, and, and we're to be helping others uh, and caring for their needs. So let's come to the fourth thing. There's only five things here. Is Let's look at the brothers and their, their testing in Egypt. The testing continues. Look at chapter 44, verse 1. It says, And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, also put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest in his grain uh, money. And so did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning dawned and the men were sent away, they and their donkeys, when they had gone out of the city and were not yet uh, far off, Joseph said to his steward, get up, follow the men, and when you overtake them, say to them, why have you repaid evil for good? Is not this the one from which my Lord drinks, uh, and with which he indeed practices divination? You have done evil in so doing. And so he overtook them, and he spoke to them uh, these words, same words. And they said to him, Why does my Lord say these words? Far be it from us that your servants should do such a thing. Look, we brought uh, uh, how... Look, we brought back to you, sorry, uh, from the land of Canaan, the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Isn't that interesting? Well, here Joseph puts them through one more test. He's testing them. This would be the test that would really 
try them, if you will. Uh, they're, they're so convinced of their innocence that they, they just so happen in verse 9. Did you guys notice that? They, they just end up blurring this out of their mouth. It's that they say, with whomever of your servant is found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's slaves. <laughs> that was a dumb thing to say, right? Uh, obviously, they didn't think of the consequences of their words. Uh, anybody here do that, right? Any, any of you guys say something where you're like, oh, you can't catch your words and bring them back, right? You're like, oh, too late. Oh. And then hopefully humiliation kicks in, and you're like, I'm so sorry I said that, right? Um, Am I the only person saying that? <laughs> you guys are all up <laughs> to myself. But um, I, I, I hate it when you know you, you say things too soon and it's too late. And it's, it's just not fine. I think that's why the Lord gave us two ears and one mouth, right? Um, right? Think about it. Uh, and it's best to stay quiet and let people think that you're wise, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then to open up your mouth and then people find out the truth. Oh, no. <laughs> There, there's a, oh, what does it say? Uh, with much words, there's, what is that verse? Um, sin abounds, basically. I forget the exact verse, but um, it, there, evil is present, right? And, and, and with much words, we got to be careful with our words. Even, even the Bible tells us when we're praying, when we're talking to the Lord, let your words be few, right? Because you're coming in the presence of the Lord. There's something about the fear of the Lord and coming before Him where we can have that spirit of just arrogance and thinking we're something. When, when we do have access, by all means, His blood gives us that boldness that we can actually uh, stand in the presence of the Lord, come before the throne of God. Uh, doesn't mean that we can just be like, 10 million words, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We, he wants a relationship, and so it's good to talk with the Lord, wait on the Lord, right? Hear from the Lord. It's a beautiful thing. Anyways, look at verse 10. It says, and, and he said, Now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found shall be my slave, and you shall be blameless. Then each man speedily let down his sack to the ground, and each opened his sack. And so he searched. He began with the oldest and left off with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then it tore, they tore their clothes, and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. And so Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there. And they fell before him on the ground. Notice they did all this in their own initiative. It sounds like they only arrested Benjamin, if you will, because he was the only one who had that. Uh, but it sounded like they took the initiative to load everything back up and head back. Uh, and Joseph said to them, What deed is this you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination? In other words, Joseph says, you know, I, I can interpret dreams, didn't you guys, you know? Um, verse 16, then Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Here we are, my Lord's slaves, both we and... He also with whom the cup was found. Wow. Finally, after 21 years, they finally get it. They finally confess and acknowledge, really, their sin. Uh, but the truth, they, they, they can't hide it anymore. Isn't that interesting? God sees all. He knows all. We can't hide anything from the Lord. Here, finally, we see uh, humiliation, if you will, out of the brothers, right? They finally come. And they're, they're honest, they're truthful, they, they, they finally expose uh, their hearts, you can say. You know, in Proverbs 15, verse 3, it says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, it says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So they finally come clean. And, and uh, you know, look at verse 17. It says, But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave. And as for you, Joseph says, go up in peace to your father. So notice, this is the test, really, that Joseph is giving uh, his brothers. And uh, uh, he's intentionally 
obviously he chose Benjamin, right? He intentionally said, hey, put that in his sack and then, you know, go and go, go get them, overtake them. Oh, and then tell them this. And then he tells them. And, and so, uh, but it's all to see if his brothers were going to throw Benjamin under the bus, basically, like they did with Joseph, right? Uh, and, and when Joseph said, I, I just want this one and the rest of you go, go back your, your way, go home. I'm sure Joseph was probably thinking they'd be like, uh, well, thank you so much for your kindness, sir. We we get going now. <laughs> Goodbye now. We're we're gonna go. See you later. Hey, Benjamin, it was nice knowing you, right? He wanted to see. Is that still his brothers, right? Uh, are they still the same way and the, the way they sold him off into slavery? And so that brings us to the last thing we want to go over here is uh, the fifth thing is they're pleading in Egypt. They're pleading in Egypt in verses eighteen to thirty-four. It says, Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh, my Lord, please let your servants speak a word in my Lord's hearing, and do not let your anger burn against your servants. Uh, and remember, this is Judah. Judah uh, even told Jacob, you know, like, oh, oh, you know, let this be on me. So here he is taking a stand. He says to Joseph, For you are even like Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, we have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, who is young. His brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. And we said to my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. But you said to your servants, unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. And so it was when we went up to your servant, my father, that we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, go back and buy us a little food. But we said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother is with us. And then we will go down. For we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, speaking of Jacob, Israel, you know that my wife bore me two sons, and the one went out from me, and I said, surely he is torn into pieces, and I have not seen him since. But if you take this one also from me, and calamity, calamity befalls him, you shall bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Isn't that interesting? He had gray hair and didn't have white hair, so interesting. Um, now, therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad is with us, since his life is bound up in the lad's life, it will happen when he sees that the lad is not with us, that we he will die. And so your servants will go down, uh, bring down the, the gray hair of your servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. For your servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father forever, Judah says. So now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad as a slave to my Lord. In other words, let me take his place, right? And let the lad go up with his brothers. For how shall I go to my father if the lad is not with me? Lest perhaps I see the evil that would come upon my father. So the brothers finally standing up and taking responsibility for themselves here. In other words, they're passing the test uh, that Joseph is setting before them. And they pass this test, but the, uh, next week we're going to see that Joseph finally read the great reveal, right? We're going to see that next week, uh, Lord willing. But the, the blessings, I notice, come after humility. It wasn't until they humbled themselves that the blessings came. Isn't that interesting? And, and I think it's interesting how God, he tests us today. But the reason being to grow us, to mature us, right? And, and to cause us not to rely upon our own resources, but his, right? His grace to, to, to fall back and ask for his, his mercy and his grace in our lives. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with this last verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Amen? Let's go to pray, guys. Lord, thank you so much uh, for the time that we have together. And um, 
Lord, what a, an encouragement, Lord, to see your heart through Joseph's life, Lord, uh, to see how you test us, Lord, to see uh, when we humble ourselves, Lord, uh, that finally, Lord, we, we can find that rest, we can find that peace when we finally give up. I pray, Lord, if there's anybody here who is struggling, who's fighting, Lord, uh, that they would just give up and that they would give in to your grace, Lord, and allow you by your spirit, Lord, to come in and just transform and change up everything in their lives. I pray for those that, that need that rest, Lord, that you would show yourself to them, Lord. Uh, those who are searching uh, the scripture, that their hearts would be fulfilled, that they would be satisfied, that you would be their desire, Lord, that you would be their light uh, that they follow for the rest of their lives. Lord, be with us, Lord. Continue to show us uh, and teach us, Lord, your words, that we might be wise servants, Lord, that we might be those uh, who bring, or just are pleasing in your sight. We love you, Father. We thank you for, for all the things that you're doing in our lives, Lord, even those things we don't understand, uh, but whatever it is that's uh, happening in our lives right now, give us the, the faith, Lord, really to, to keep our eyes focused in on you uh, and get our eyes off of whatever it is uh, that's causing our hearts grief, Lord. Um, we love you, Father, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys.